Okay, we're gonna get you out of here, here in time to get some lunch. Um, so hello, thanks everyone for coming. Um, before we get started, just a quick show of hands. Um, how many of you here have used OpenTelemetry? Awesome. Uh, how many of you have run into a problem configuring OpenTelemetry? All right. How many of you have spent way too long troubleshooting an issue to find out that it was all due to misconfiguration? All right, thank you for making me feel like I'm not alone in this. So OpenTelemetry offer, offers a lot of flexibility for end users. You can do so many things with Hotel. You can configure tracers, meters, provider, or loggers. You can combine all three. You can choose any kind of combinations. You can process your data. You can filter some data. Uh, you can configure instrumentation. That's a lot of stuff that it's capable of doing. It's a lot of capabilities. It's also a lot of surface area. And so a few years ago, I was finding myself in a position where I was spending a lot of time configuring multiple applications in different languages. And I was finding it really difficult to go from one to the other. Um, and when I'm, when I'm talking about configuring an application, I mean, I was configuring it programmatically and translating from one language to the other wasn't always super clear. And so here, I'm not gonna make you squint, you'll just have to take my word for it. On the right-hand side, we have a Go app um, configuring a, a meter provider with a couple of exporters and a tracer provider with a couple of exporters. I tried to include only the required code, but you know, it's, it's a lot of code. Uh, and on the right-hand side, there's the same kind of setup in Python. And if you look at it conceptually, they're, very, they're fairly sil similar. Like you'll have batching and you'll have you know, tracer providers and all this other stuff. Like it's fairly similar. But if you look at the details, um, you know, on the right-hand side, Python allows you to create a batch span processor object that you then add to your tracer provider after you've configured your tracer provider. Whereas in Go, you have a batcher option that you have to pass into your code when you're instantiating your tracer provider. Um, also on the left-hand side, Go calls a standard out logger, like a console log, uh, output uh, exporter, a standard out uh, exporter, and Python calls it a console exporter. So they're kind of similar, but slightly different, which is kind of confusing if you're just going back and forth between the two. Here I have a couple more examples. So on the Java side, on the right-hand side, you can use uh, a builder pattern to instantiate your exporters, which is pretty common in Java. And on the left-hand side, uh, Otel JavaScript allows you to, has a convenience method called node SDK that lets you specify a bunch of configuration when you're instantiating it. So all of these have slightly different uh, ways of, of, of configuring your open telemetry code. Now I wanna call out a few things. One, I'm not up here to say any of this is bad. This is the code we have today. Implementations have been running for years, and it's great. Two, um, I want to call out that a lot of these are very idiomatic in the language that they're written in, which is great, because that's what you want. You want people that are used to writing code in JavaScript to have a familiar experience. And in fact, the OpenTelemetry specification says, that's great. Implementation should be idiomatic. You should use the paradigms of your language. But I gotta say, if you're a polyglot user and you have Go, code in Go and Java and Python and you have to switch between all of them, it really sucks. It becomes a really frustrating experience to try and relearn all of the concepts that you need to do in each language to be able to actually just get instrumentation going. So what if there was a, a, a better way to do this? What if there was a way to um, configure things in a language agnostic, using a language agnostic mechanism uh, to get started more easily? Good news, there is. So, environment variables, we're all familiar with them. Uh, thank you for coming to our talk about configuration. The rest of this will all be about the wonders of environment variables. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. Um, but they're, you know, they're around, they're great, they're pretty familiar. Uh, NVARs have been around forever. They got a lot of support from 12-factor app and containerized workloads. And as you can see here, OpenTelemetry has a big list of environment variables. Um, you might not be able to read it at the top, but it does say that support for environment variables is optional in the specification. And so it means that you know, uh, different languages have different level of supports for all the variables. So NVARs have some limitations. They're great for flat data, but as soon as you try and express something more complex, it becomes a little bit tricky. So if you wanted to express something like a metric view, or maybe you want to configure multiple exporters, these are things that would then require some kind of like encoding or maybe like some kind of special naming scheme, which 
kind of takes away from the simplicity of environment variables. Open telemetry tries really hard not to break backwards compatibility. That's something we all really strive for. And that becomes, that means that it becomes really hard to make modifications to environment variables support without breaking backwards compatibility because there isn't really a way of doing this well with versioning. Um, the last thing is with, you know, with environment variables, everything is really just a string. So if you want to, if you want to convey the fact that you're passing in explicit types, you have to go back to some kind of like naming scheme. And so we turn to declarative config because we wanted something that was not only language agnostic, but also was capable of supporting the rich uh, configuration that programmatic config gives us today in Hotel. And so uh, declarative config is a mechanism by which you focus on the end state of your application. So you basically declare what you would like to see have deployed um, rather than focusing on how. And um, you know, if you're familiar with Kubernetes, I assume some of you know things about Kubernetes being at KubeCon. Um, you, know, you really focus on telling Kubernetes, hey, I want these resources and go make them and I don't care how you make it happen. So a couple of years ago, we uh, got together, a bunch of us created the Open Telemetry Configuration Working Group and uh, put together an OTAP that uh, recommended for implementations to support declarative config. And two years later, uh, we're now in a place where declarative config is um, still in development, but it's ready for early adopters. Jax is gonna go much more into the details of what declarative config is. Um, but for now, it's enough to know that it's an alternative mechanism for configuring hotel components, uh, and that it supports a structured data model if you wanna use that in your code. Or alternatively, you can pass in a YAML file formatted file uh, and configure things that way. So just a heads up, if you don't like YAML, um, you might want to close your eyes in a little bit. You'll, you'll see when. You'll see when. All right, so I'm going to jump to the demo. All right, so before I run this. So I'm going to be running a, a tool called Hotel TUI. Um, and the only purpose of running this tool is to show you the data coming in. Uh, all right, other terminal, this one. So what I have here is I have a Go application, um, which I've configured using the Hotel SDK. So I have a meter provider, logger provider, and tracer provider, all configuring through code. And you can see it's a lot of code. It's almost like 100 lines or something. Um, and so, you know, if we run this application, oops, well, we should see some details coming in here. There we go, we have this application called the GoDemo, great. So SDK config works. Now, what if I wanted to just make this a little bit simpler? I'm gonna quickly glance over some, or show you some of the details of what it looks like to configure things using Hotel config uh, and a data model. So here I have, a, I have a function where I'm just passing in a struct that has all of the details of what I would like to happen. I'm not gonna spend too much time on here, I just wanna show you that it is possible um, because it still ends up being quite a bit of code that you kind of have to, to write. So instead I'm going to just go ahead and delete all this code because that's too much. So now instead what, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this function called setup otel in which I'm going to pass in a config.yaml file read the file in, use a method called parse YAML, uh, and then assign, uh, create an SDK that I can use to assign my uh, meter tracer and logger provider with. And the config file looks something like this. So in here, I'm going to configure a tracer provider, meter provider, and a logger provider at the bottom. And you can see here I've configured a simple uh, processor with a console exporter and a batch uh, processor with an OTLP exporter. So I'm already configuring two exporters for the same uh, provider. This is something that's not currently possible using environment variables. So I'm going to run my application again and assuming things go well here. Let's see, there we go. Data is still rolling in, nothing too exciting. But the nice thing is now I only have like, you know, 20 lines of code instead. Now, I also wanted to show you how I can take that configuration and apply it to another language. And so I have a PHP example. 
I apologize if you're a PHP uh, connoisseur. This might not be the nicest code. I had a really hard time writing it. So um, in here, all I had to learn to use the PHP implementation was how to parse my file, which you know there's a nice config, config uh, method that I can call. And then I call the builder. And this is really all I'm going to do to get my application to generate code, to generate my, uh, my traces. So I'm going to run it here. And if all goes well, I should, oh, I should start seeing some PHP data rolling in. Awesome. So I have two applications with the same config uh, being emitted with very little knowledge of any of the concepts of how the, the different bits and bobbles of the SDKs are configured. Now, I want to show you one more example here, which is how I can take this configuration and modify it and apply it to two different languages. And I did not test this earlier, which I should have, but here we are. So I'm going to save this. This is going to tell my application, also emit OTLP, but to a different port. And this port is where I'm running my Jaeger instance. So I'm going to cancel this, rerun it. So I've restarted my Go app. My PHP app is going to reload the, the config file automatically. And if I look at my Jaeger instance, I now see data coming from my PHP app, my Go app, and everything is going well. And all I had to do to do this is I just had to modify my configuration file. All right, the last thing in this demo, and then I'm going to pass it over to Jack, is I want to show you how I can take this configuration and not only apply it to my applications, but I can also use it in the OpenTelemetry collector. So the collector allows you to configure traces, metrics, and logs to be emitted to an OTLP backend. This is for the internal telemetry of the collector and not the telemetry pipeline. And it supports OTL config as well. So I'm going to put this YAML in here, run my collector, oops, go back to here, search for my OTL collector, and there it is. So now I've used the same config in applications in two languages and in the OTL collector. Uh, and it really simplified my code. And now I'm going to pause this and pass it over to Jack to tell us more. All right, thank you, Alex, for that wonderful introduction. There we go. All right, for the next part of this presentation, I'm gonna dive deeper into the nuts and bolts of declarative configuration and talk about the specification that defines all the bits that allow all this to work. Like other parts of OpenTelemetry, the spec is divided into three parts. We have the data model, the SDK, and the API. To frame this discussion, let's first consider the core workflow we need to facilitate. We need some way for users to specify the desired configuration. In this trivial case, I want to export batches of spans to some OTLP endpoint and include an API key header. We need to be able to specify this in a way that's language agnostic, and the format needs to be agreed upon beforehand to ensure that all parties are speaking the same language. Separately, we need code that can interpret the user's desired configuration and return SDK components that are created by calling the corresponding bits of the programmatic configuration interface. Here on the right side of the screen, we see how our plain English description of our config corresponds to the equivalent programmatic config interface. Let's start with the data model. The data model establishes the common language for users to express their desired configuration. It consists of a series of types and properties defined using JSON schema, a popular open source specification for describing and validating data. It states how to encode these types and properties in YAML, and defines an environment variable substitution syntax for the bits of configuration that need to change and for injecting secrets. Going back to our reference workflow, I want to export batches of spans to some OTLP endpoint and include an API key header. On the left, we can see how I can express this in YAML according to the data model. Moving on, the SDK defines the bits of machinery that an implementation uses to parse, validate, and interpret the contents of a YAML config file. The philosophy behind the SDK is that the common case should be easy and the advanced case should be possible. To this end, the SDK is broken into a small set of composable primitives. First, we have the parse operation. This accepts a reference to a config file, 
and is responsible for validating its contents, performing environment variable substitution, and returning an in-memory config model. Next, we have create. This accepts an in-memory config model and interprets its contents to call the corresponding programmatic configuration interface and returns SDK components. On the right, we can see how parse and create are used in our reference workflow. A config file representing our desired state is passed to the parse operation. The result of parse is passed to create, and create returns SDK components. This is our tracer provider, our meter provider, and our logger provider. There's also a mechanism called component provider, which allows custom SDK extension plugins to participate in configuration. This is how custom samplers, exporters, and processors can be referenced in a config file. We want the common case to be easy and expect most users' interaction with the SDK to be setting a single environment variable, OTEL experimental config file. When the SDK sees this environment variable, it uses the primitives we've just discussed to produce SDK components. Advanced users can reference these primitives directly in all sorts of novel ways. For example, you could retrieve a config file from a remote source instead of a local file system. You could take a layered approach to configuration, combining the results of multiple config sources. Or you can manually override bits of the config model after parse is called, but before call and create. Finally, there's the API portion of declarative config, which we call the instrumentation config API. The idea here is to provide a mechanism where instrumentation is able to access and participate in config rather than just the SDK. If you recall, one of the core tenets of open telemetry is the separation of the API and the SDK. Instrumentation is only supposed to take a dependency on the API where users take a dependency on the SDK and configure it to specify how data is processed and exported. Therefore, for instrumentation to participate in, the, in configuration, we need a configuration portion of the API. And so we introduced a concept called config provider. This is analogous to tracer provider, meter provider, and logger provider. And as its name suggests, it provides config. Instrumentation has a reference to config provider and can read relevant config properties during initialization. Here I've included a little code snippet showing how this works. Instrumentation starts with a reference to config provider and walks down the tree structure shown in the YAML on the left, first accessing the Java node here then accessing the logback appender node, then reading a relevant Boolean property and initializing accordingly. One thing we've recognized is that there, are, there is instrumentation in config which recurs over and over again across languages and libraries. These are things like the set of uh, headers in HTTP client captures and whether statement parsing is enabled for database instrumentation. In our data model, we standardize these recurring bits of instrumentation but we also support configuration, which is specific to a particular language or a single instrumentation library. Now it's time for another demo. And you're going to have to bear with me on this one because I'm doing a live demo on somebody else's computer. What can go wrong? I'm going to be, uh, this time, I'm going to be diving a dip, bit deeper and focusing on scenarios which illustrate the differences between environment variable and declarative config. I'm running a, a Java application called the Spring Pet Clinic. This is a popular sample application that uses the Spring Boot framework. It has a simple back end and front end and demonstrates things like CRUD operations, errors, and more. Here I package it up into a Docker container and I also bundle in the OpenTelemetry Java agent to automatically install instrumentation. Now let's take a look at what I'm doing in the Docker Compose file. To compare and contrast configuration interfaces, I'm actually going to run the sample application twice. First with environment variable configuration, and a second time with declarative configuration. We're also running a couple of open source backends to export the data to. We've got Prometheus for metrics, we've got Jaeger for tracing, and as Alex showed earlier, the Hotel TUI a terminal user interface to visualize spans, metrics, and logs directly in the terminal. Now let's run it and generate some load and call attention to a few things of note. The first thing I want to call attention to is that for the app using declarative config, I'm setting the OTEL experimental config file environment variable. As discussed, this causes the SDK components to initialize based on the config file contents. 
This is the only thing we need to do in order to opt into declarative config. Now let's jump into this file and look at its contents. Know how we're configuring data to be exported. In Tracer Provider, I'm registering a couple of batch span processors, each configured to export spans over OTLP. We have one exporting spans to Jaeger and another to the OTEL TUI. Down in Meter Provider, we have a similar situation where we have two periodic metric readers configured to export metrics to OTLP locations. We've got one exporting to Prometheus and another to the OTEL TUI again. Note that it's not possible to configure this with environment variables. And if we go back to our Docker Compose file, we see that our first app using environment variables is limited to only exporting data to the TUI. Now let's look at the sampler config. We've set the sampler to be the parent-based sampler and the root to be the rule-based routing sampler. You're probably familiar with the parent-based sampler since it's the default in OpenTelemetry, but may not be familiar with rule-based routing sampler. This is a non-standard sampler which is maintained in the OpenTelemetry Java Contrib repository. Despite this, we're able to reference it and configure it based, thanks to the component provider mechanism that I previously discussed. The rule-based routing sampler delegates the other sampler if spans match a configurable set of rules. If no rules matched, a fallback sampler is used. Here we configure it to drop spans to the application's health check endpoint. Otherwise, fall back to the trace ID ratio based sampler, capturing 40% of traces. This is the type of sampler config which is very realistic to expect in production de deployments, but which is impossible to configure with environment variables. Let's navigate over to the TUI and see if this is working as expected. I'm over in the traces view of the TUI, and the first thing I'm going to do is clear the data and wait for some new data to come in. If I filter to data from our first app configured with environment variables, I see a couple of traces coming in. I see traces coming to the applica application's health check endpoint, and then these other ones, which if I click into one, I see that it's to the application's owner's endpoint. Now, to contrast that, I'm going to look for traces from our second app using declarative config. And if I look at these traces, I see that uh, you know, this is, this is a trace for the owner's endpoint. And notably, I don't see any traces for the health check endpoint. It looks like the sampler is successfully dropping those spans. The next thing I want to call attention to is the views that we're configuring within meter provider. In this case, I've decided that a metric called JVM GC duration isn't particularly useful to me. And so I've configured a view to select it and drop it. I've also configured a view to change the histogram bucket boundaries for a metric called HTTP server request duration. Views are a powerful concept in OpenTelemetry, but because they're not configurable with environment variables, they're probably not something all users are familiar with. Declarative config effectively unlocks this tool. Let's head back over to the TUI and see if they're working as expected. This time I'm gonna to navigate to the metrics page and I'm gonna search for the JVM GC duration metric. And what I want to call out is that I'm only seeing this from app one, which is our app configured with environment variables. The view uh, is successfully dropping this metric in our second app, which is configured using declarative config. Now I'm going to search for the HTTP server request duration metric. And the first thing I want to note is that, oh boy, <laughs> lock screen. <laughs> Okay. Um, the first thing I want to note is that we're receiving data from both of our apps. That makes sense. But as I toggle between these, I want to call out that the data from the first app, if we look down in the bottom right corner, has histograms reporting with the default bucket boundaries. In contrast, in contrast, the, the data from the second app has the, the, the bucket boundaries reflected from our view. So I'm running short on time right now, so I'm going to skip an, an, another part of the demo, and we're going to jump right to the conclusion of our presentation. I want to leave you with just a few parting thoughts before we go. First, declarative config is language agnostic and highly expressive. It's available today in a, wide, in a variety of languages and can already solve problems that environment variables can't. 
There are some limitations, but we encourage users in the audience to give it a try. Or if it's unavailable in your language, open an issue to request it. For any contributors or maintainers in the audience, I encourage you to consider implementing it. And if you do, come join us in the config sig. Next, declarative config is the, is the place where current and future config work in OpenTelemetry is happening. As OTEL continues to evolve, expect new features to have a configuration surface area that manifests in our data model. Finally, we're working towards stability and are currently targeting sometime in 2025. So that actually wraps things up. And I just want to thank everyone for your time and attention today. Uh, we're making this presentation available um, via the QR codes that you see here. There's some useful links and resources in the appendix. Uh, and if you have any feedback you'd like to share with us, there's a QR code for that as well. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.